of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Thank you, ladies. What a blessing. Thank you so much. And, well, good evening. And, uh, welcome to our service this evening. I'd like you to please take your Bibles to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8. That's in the Old Testament, by the way. Zechariah chapter 8. For you that are Bible scholars, that's in the Old Testament. Amen. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8, and uh, would you please look with me at verse 9, Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 9, and would you please stand for the reading of God's word this evening, thank you, <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 8, verses 9 through 13, we'll look at verses 9 through 13, we'll alternate, I'll read verse 9, then you read with me verse 10, and so on, right up to verse 13. Thus saith the Lord, verse 9, So thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built together. For before these days there was no hire for man, 
nor any hire for beast, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I said all men, every one against his neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts together. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the grain shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. Now please pay attention to verse 13, would you? And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, and all house of Israel, so will I save you. And ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Again, this is, I think, the second time in Scripture that is telling us for our hands, or for their hands, to be strong. But let your hands be strong. Would you please be seated? Thank you. The main message, the main part of, of Zechariah chapter 8 is summed up in verse 13. With, the, with this part in verse 13. I will save you and ye shall be a blessing. I know of a gentleman that sits among us here that once in a while he would say to me, you're a blessing. And I just want you to know that God wants you to be a blessing. He really does. See, God blessed us, or God blessed His people, so His people can be a blessing to others. He pours His grace on us, so we can pour it on others. See, God promised, and here in Zechariah chapter 8, He promises to restore His blessing on the nation of Israel. If you read the first part of chapter 8, you will realize that boy Israel, Judah, had been through tough waters, difficult times. And then the Lord says, I'm going to promise the remnant of Israel, the remnant of Judah, that's rebuilding the temple. I'm going to promise them my blessings on them. And then God says, then I want you to bless others. Now, Zechariah chapter 8 is talking to Israel. It is not talking to the church. It's not even talking to us. It's primarily, strictly, Pointly, right, talking to Israel. But I would like to, not a matter of taking the liberty, but I would like to, to use some principles here that we, read, that we read in Zechariah chapter 8 to be also applied to us. But please note this. The message in Zechariah chapter 8 was given to the nation of Israel. But there are some things there that we can apply also to our lives today. Because today I want to talk to you about you being a blessing. You being a blessing. Do you realize that, at least I hear it every day, maybe you too, that 90% of the time, that what things that we hear out there are just plain complaints? Huh? That the, the water's not running well, uh, it's cold, it's hot, it's going to rain, it's not going to rain, it's... Uh, the car doesn't start, the car starts too fast, or uh, I don't have enough gas, or I don't have enough cash, or this is Monday, or it's only Tuesday, and and it seems like we get into a rut, don't we? Well, I want you to notice, notice several things about being a blessing. Number one, God has promised to bless His people abundantly. Now, some people have said to me, believe it or not, I heard this, and I, so I wrote it down. You may have heard people say, maybe God has promised blessings, but I am not experiencing them. They have told me that. Instead of promises, all I have is problem, problems, an abundance of problems. Have you heard that? I've heard that from people. But I want you to know something that God has promised to bless His people abundantly. His blessings does not depend on us. It depends on Him. His blessings does not depend on us. It depends 100% on Him. 
15 times, if you look at chapter 8, 15 times in this chapter, we read this, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. As a matter of fact, in verses 2, 3, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, I'm not going to read them, we have these words, I will or I am, declaring this thing, that surely the blessing comes from above and does not come from underneath here. What does verse 7 says? Look at verse 7, please. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. I will be, I am the blessing. I will give you the blessing. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the blessing comes from above. And if you're blessed this morning and we all, I mean this evening, and we're all blessed by the grace of God is because he has blessed us. In Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 6, Paul puts it like this. Paul says that he that hath begun a good work in you will what? Will finish it. He will finish it. God's blessings comes from him. But not, not, not only that, but God promises may seem impossible to us. The blessings that he has for us, it may seem impossible to us, but they're not difficult to him by any means. Look at chapter 8 again, please. And would you look at verse, um, look at verse 6 in chapter 8. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts? You see, it, it would seem kind of weird and strange and kind of impossible for the nation of Israel to believe after being tormented for years upon years under the Babylonian Empire, being crushed as they were, and humbled as they were, now that they were a land of desolate, and they were devastated for them to realize and believe that God is going to bless me. And you may be here this evening tonight, you'd be thinking, you know, who am I for God to bless of all that I've been through, how, how I have forgotten Him, how I have walked away from Him, years upon years that I did not read God's Word, nor even think about Him, nor even prayed, how in the world would I even think that God is going to bless me? But let me, say, let me tell you something right now, what seems impossible to you is possible to God. Listen carefully, please. How often, how often we think and make this mistake by judging God's ability by our ability. Judging His ability by our ability. Like the disciples, when they saw that great multitude of 5,000 plus, and all they had was a, a meager five loaves of bread and how many fish? Two. And one said, Lord, what is this compared to all this? And sometimes we think the same way, don't we? How in the world am I going to really be blessed by God? Who am I? I make so many mistakes. But the Lord does not meet the need of blessing us according to what we have or that what according to what we wish we had. We say, if I was like brother so-so, man, I know I'll be blessed. If I was like sister and so-and-so, no doubt about it, God will pour His blessings. No. Ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed according to His purpose and according to His power. God is teaching Israel one thing. I promise to bless you, and the blessing is going to come from me. And we can apply that to our lives as believers this evening. I'm talking on Sunday night, to my knowledge, 90% or more or better of believers, you that have trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, just like I have. And we've been saved graciously and marvelously through His power, through His power, and through His grace. I want you to know that we don't deserve His blessings. We don't deserve His love. We do not deserve His presence, but He gives it to us with a purpose and through his power. Would you please look with me in 2 Corinthians. Leave there, Zechariah. Don't leave there, please. Because we're going to go back to it in a moment. But please turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 
chapter 8 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. Might be rich. Look at me please in Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. In verse 19, and many of you know this verse by memory. Philippians chapter 4 and verse, verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I just want you to know something. God told Israel, you're a, you're, you're, you're a desolate land. The enemy has destroyed you. I've allowed this. Because God was disciplining a nation that turned their back on Him. But God says, I'm going to restore you. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make you a blessing so when I will bless you, you can bless others. And ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you that have, we all, not just you, all of us have so many blessings today. Don't we? I mean, we can just come here and just write a list of things that He has blessed us. Please know this, that the blessings that He's blessed you, He wants you to bless others likewise. But not only that, please also notice this, that God has promised blessings to us like the nation of Israel. But this blessing requires a holy living for the Lord. Yes, I use the word holy living. People are afraid when we say holy living, right? They get a little bit scared. Holy living? You mean to tell me that I need to be perfect? Please listen carefully. The very first thing that the Lord, the Lord talks to Israel here, is concerning their strength. It seems to me like Israel was scared. And Israel, was a, Israel not only was scared, but Israel was weak. Look, look back with me, please, in chapter 8. Look at verse 9, Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be what? Let your hands be strong. Look at, jump to verse 13. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, and O house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Twice the Holy Spirit has told the nation of Israel, and even us, that we do not have to be weak. We can be strong. And of course, they needed strength so they could, they could have rebuilt the temple. And we need strength to face each day of our lives. We need strength to face each challenge that we have in our life. I'll guarantee you that tomorrow morning there will be new, fresh challenges for you and I to face. It may be in an office. It may be in the school. It may be on the way to the school or the way to the office. It may be in a factory. It may be in our own very own home. It may be in our neighbor. It may be as we get together with family members and with friends. But there's challenges that comes before us, situations that are difficult. And God says, I will give you strength. I'll give you strength. So he said, let your hands be strong. But then also he said, do not fear. Look again, verse 13, would you please? Chapter 8. It says here in verse 13, And it shall come to pass, as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, and the house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. And then look at these two little words. Fear not. Isn't that what Jesus told his disciples? Fear not. When he walked on the water in the midst of a storm, Jesus says, Fear not, it's me. And he reminds us, our Savior, that when we are challenged, and we face situations at work or in our home or with our health that is out of our control. God says, number one, I will bless you. You can't bless yourself. I will bless you. And I will bless you so you can bless others. But then he says, number two, I want you to be strong. During this period of time, Israel, be strong. Rebuild the temple. Be strong. You can do it. And folks, whatever task God has had for you, whatever task He has for you, He will give you the strength to do it. Let me tell you something right now. 
by the grace of God and only by the grace of God. Only. I tell you right now, emphasize that. Circle it. Mark it. Highlight it. I'm not lying to you. Only by the grace of God. Uh, but I lasted 41 years in the ministry. Bless God, I tell you. I really. Uh, people that know me, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I'll stand in front of people in Spanish or in English. And I don't know French. But, uh, and I'll know those two languages. And do my best. Do my best. Only God knows. And still standing. Not because of me. All because of him. So will you. I'll tell you right now. So will you. That's how, that's how Israel was able to rebuild the temple. My brothers and sisters in Christ. It was not through their great wisdom. It was not through their great strength. It was not by their capability or ability. But all upon the, the ability and the strength of almighty God. See the Lord tells us be strong. Do not be afraid. He told Peter this. Peter, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail it. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. But then I mentioned, listen carefully, the blessing that we are about to experience and that we, are, we experience must be accompanied by a holy living. God wants you to live a holy life. Let me say it again. God does not want you to be a priest, but God wants you to, be a holy, to live a holy life. Why? Because we're Christians, that's why. To call ourselves Christians and then live like the world is to mock God before the world. Let me say it again. To call ourselves believers, Christians, and then to live like the world is to mock the true and living God, our Savior, before the world. God wants us to live a holy life. He said, don't fear, be strong, but live a holy life. Because you bear my name. Look at, look at back in chapter 8, would you please? Zechariah chapter 8, look at verse 3. In chapter 8 and verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, I am, I am about return unto Zion, and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth. Notice this, a city of truth. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. You and I are people of truth and should be people of holiness. If you turn with me to Titus, the little book of Titus, when right you the New Testament, Titus chapter two. Would you please turn there with me? To Titus, Titus chapter two and verse twelve. Titus chapter two and verse twelve teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Yes, God wants to bless you so you can bless others. And with that blessing, God wants you to face your task not with fear or uncertainty, but with strength, because he will give you that strength, and we don't have to be afraid. And then he said to us, hey, and here in the book in Zechariah, to the nation of Israel, and it can be applied to us, listen carefully, you need to live a holy life. You need to live a holy life. Don't mock the name of Jesus, our Savior. Let me make one more point here. God blesses people. It should be a blessing to others in two ways. We bless others by showing how to find God. Folks, believe it or not, people are seeking for something in their lives. And the answer is Jesus Christ. There's no other answer. You want to be a blessing to others? Go soul winning. Go reach others with the gospel. That's how really you become a blessing to others. You become a blessing to others eternally. You want to be a blessing to others do discipleship. Find someone. We had the privilege, by the grace of God, of going Thursday night, Pastor and myself and Adrian Gonzalez, to Alfredo and Addie Perez Khan's home. And they have a beautiful house, right, Pastor? They have a beautiful house. And they received us with love as they always have. And she's been battling a, a sickness. 
And at one point, she thought she had cancer. As a matter of fact, the doctor thought that she had cancer. And all the indications was that, that she, would, she had cancer. And then came the, the blessing from God of heaven. Then came the good news on her behalf that she did not have cancer. And uh, she was rejoicing with us. And uh, uh, she called and said, uh, uh, I just want to rejoice. Thank you for your prayers. But that, that couple uh, was uh, years ago met at, uh, at Publix uh, supermarket right here on 114th and Bird Road. And they met uh, Brother, uh, I think it was you guys, right? I'm not sure if it was the Oaks, I think it was the Oaks. And then, uh, then Brother Bruce and his dear wife were, all, were also there uh, at different times. But they met Brother Bruce and his dear wife and also uh, the Oaks. And uh, they, the, the Oaks and Brother Bruce witnessed to them. Uh, and they came out, and they came here, and they checked our church. And believe it or not, uh, these people are, they were Catholics. And they were strong Catholics. They came here, and they fell in love with this group. I don't understand that. No, they fell in love with this group of people. They really did. And they kept on coming. But just for curiosity's sake. And let me tell you about the blessing here. And then they asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Savior. And then we started, and we still are, discipling them. And be, throughout our efforts here of showing the love of God to them, and through the efforts of discipling them, they received Christ as Savior, and now we're praying that they'll get baptized uh, through God's mercy and grace. You see, God gives us the blessing, so we can take that blessing and give it to others. Without being afraid means... Strengthened through his strength. And then also, please notice this. We can be a blessing to others not only by sharing the gospel and discipling, but also getting involved. Would you get involved? I'll tell you, there's so many ministries in our church here. I mean, there really is. Uh, I mean, there, you, can, you can number of, I can just number an, uh, a number of ministries. We have the Sunday school ministry. We have the music ministry. We have the prison ministry. We have the Thursday night ministry of soul winning and going out. We have the ministry of Wednesday night. You can get involved some way with the Awanas or the college and career or whatever place you like to, you feel like you can get involved in. So many ministries here. Get involved, but not only get involved. There's also the blessing of blessing others from afar. We all cannot go as a mission field. You know that. You've heard that. But we can all give. And we can all pray. What I'm saying is tonight, God wants you to be a blessing. Are you a blessing? God wants you to be a blessing, my brothers and sisters in Christ. He has blessed you so you can bless others. Would you please bow your head as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, as we come to your throne of grace this evening, and before we partake of your supper, to remember us, to remind us of your broken body and then your precious blood that was shed. It was not poured, but it was shed for us from the cross. And tonight, Lord Jesus, those of us who have been redeemed by that precious blood, thank you. But Lord, tonight, may we examine our hearts. Are we being a blessing? Is there a hidden sin? Is there something that we are doing wrong as a believer that we need to confess and let go? And Lord, before we come to this, to your supper and partake of your supper, you teach us in your word that we need to examine ourselves. And so Lord, tonight, even before we can ever be a blessing, you tell us that holy living is important. It's a requirement. Lord, help us to be holy. Help us, Lord Jesus, to walk close to you. We pray, Father, we may examine our lives tonight as we partake of, the, of your supper. We pray, Lord Jesus, there's an area that, that, Father, we need to improve, an area that we need to uh, dedicate to you that we haven't dedicated yet. May we do so tonight. Uh, Lord, help us to be a blessing to others just as you have blessed us. 
And Father, above all, if there's one here that does not know you as their Savior, we pray that tonight will be the night that they will open their hearts to you and receive you as their Savior. May they come forward and allow one of our pastors, one of our laymen or lay ladies, that Father can lead someone to you, talk to them. Lord, I just pray that you'll touch their heart tonight. Bless us, Father, we ask, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.